Got another question here on the transition elements topic. So number six now, as with all the others, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So just click on that, have a go, and then play the video for the answers. So part A, transition element definition, forms at least one ion with an incomplete D subshell. Notice it says full electron configuration. So we've got to start right at the beginning, 1s2, etc. So for the element ion, there's your electron configuration. Remember, 3D and 4S can be either way around. The common oxidation state of iron are plus 2, plus 3. And so, therefore, the iron 2 plus configuration, you need to lose these two electrons. So it just goes to 3D6 at the end. And for the 3 plus, we need to lose the 4S2 and one of those 3D6 electrons. So it goes to that. And as you can see from these D subshell configurations, they are incomplete because D subshells can hold up to 10 electrons. So moving on to part B, the precipitation reaction, you take any aqueous copper two compound and react it with sodium hydroxide solution. And you'd observe a pale blue precipitate of copper two hydroxide. So I've just given this simplified uh, equation for that one. You could give the more complicated one, which I'll read out in a second. But basically, any aqueous copper 2 compound is going to contain the aqueous copper 2 plus ion. So two hydroxide ions would react with them and form the COOH twice solid precipitate. That's that blue stuff there. The more complicated equation would be you take this here, so COOH2062 plus Again, you'd react with 2OH minus ions and you'd make CuOH um, twice H2O4 with no charge and 2H2O. But this simplified equation is absolutely fine. So moving on to the ligand substitution reaction now, there's a couple of options you could give, but you need to react any aqueous copper 2 compound because it's going to give you this ion here with either an excess of aqueous ammonia or you could react it with concentrated hydrochloric acid. So the excess ammonia equation looks like that. So what would you observe? This is a pale blue solution and it go to a deep blue solution. The concentrated hydrochloric acid reaction, again, you start with the hexaacyl copper two ion, remember that's that blue color, four chlorodynes, and you get this complex CuCl42 minus, and six waters. Hopefully you can read what that says. So this is actually a yellow solution. They do allow a green color for that and that's because basically you'd have the yellow and the blue present in the test tube. But it is technically yellow. Moving on to part C, we've got some information about um, platinum being very unreactive but it does react with this mixture of acids called aqua regia and we're told two products of the reaction are this substance here and nitrogen dioxide. And we've got to show that this is a, a redox reaction using oxidation states. So we'll just do the usual thing, look at oxidation states of um, atoms uh, before and after the reaction and see where the changes are. So if we start with platinum, in its element form, it's obviously got an oxidation state of zero. And if we look at when it goes to this H2PTCl6, so we've got six times minus one from those six chlorides, six times minus one. We've got two times plus one for the two hydrogens. So what's the platinum got to be to keep this neutral? It's got to be plus four. So that's an oxidation process because platinum's oxidation number has gone from zero. It's increased to plus four. So where's the other change? Well, it's actually with the nitrogen. So those three oxygens in HNO3, they're all at minus two. So three times minus two. And we've got one times one plus from the H. So what does nitrogen have to be at the start in HNO3? It's plus five. And then in NO2, we've got two times minus two. So that needs to be plus four. So there's your decrease in oxidation number. Nitrogen's gone from plus five down to plus four, so it's been reduced. 
Second part of the question, coming up with this equation is quite tricky actually. So you've got to use the oxidation number method to balance this equation. That's the easiest way to balance it, I think. So basically the premise of that is the total change of the oxidation process must match the total change of the reduction process. And that's basically because the electrons have to balance out. So if you think about the change in platinum, platinum's going from um, zero to plus four. So it's obviously losing four electrons to do that. The nitrogen has gone, um, it's changed by one from plus five to plus four. So obviously you've got an imbalance of oxidation number changes at the moment. You can't have a change of four in the oxidation process, but only a change of one in the reduction process. So to make that balance, we actually need a four in front of the uh, nitric acid, and therefore that's introducing four nitrogens. You need to have a four in front of the NO2. So now we've got the oxidation numbers working together. What we can't do now, otherwise it'll just mess up what we've just done, we can't change the numbers in front of the platinum species or the nitrogen species, otherwise it like I've just said, it'll just sort of knock everything out. The other thing we can see is we've got 12 oxygens on the left, but only eight on the right. So that's why I think this question is quite tricky. So if you look back at this sentence here, it says two products of this reaction are these. That doesn't mean that there are only two products, it just means two products are these. So there's another product we can factor in to help us out here. So we need another four oxygens basically. So we need four waters. And all we need to do now is sort out the hydrogens and chlorines. Easiest way to do it is just think of the chlorines. We've got six here. We've only got one there. So six in front of the HCl and that is the answer. So moving on to part D now, we've got to come up with a 3D diagram to show the shape of the hexachloroplatinate ion. So I've got so far with it, I'm just going to explain where the charge comes from, then we'll do the bond angle. So if you know your ions, you'll know that ammonium ions have a one plus charge. We've got two of them, so there must be two plus from those two ammonium ions. So that means this negative component must be two minus in charge. We've got an octahedral complex and the CLPTCL bond angles are all 90 degrees. First part of E, what's meant by bidentate ligand? So a bidentate ligand is a species which donates two pairs of electrons to a central metal ion and it forms two coordinate bonds or two date of covalent bonds in the process. So if we apply that to this complex here, We've got to show the structures of the two bidentate ligands in this oxaliplatin. So obviously there's your central metal ion. So these two O's here are providing a pair of electrons here and here. So there's one of your bidentate ligands will be this thing here. Obviously these are going to be O minus ions. On here, it's the nitrogens that are providing the pairs of electrons here and here. So obviously if we just imagine we cut that, I'll draw them in a second, we cut that bit off and this would be the other one. 